Hello everyone, this is Park's The Fashion Workshop. I remind you that we post new videos every day. Today we continue working with the summer dress I'm sewing for Kate. Behind me, there's the first dress we made for her. I remind you that now I'm making a dress of the cutwork embroidery. There will be two flounces in the dress. One at the neckline and one at the bottom. There will be a zipper in one of the side seams. It should be inserted for Kate to be able to put the dress on and off. She wants the dress to be close-fitting. This is the fabric I'm making the dress of. Last time I showed you how to make a pattern, and today you can start cutting the fabric. Have a look at what I've done. There are the pins inserted here, here. Have a close look at the fabric. I had to fold the fabric in such way that the holes match. This is very important. It should be done for the dress to be symmetric. It took me pretty long to fold and pin the fabric accurately. Next, I need to lay the patterns on the fabric. I remind you that the upper flounce should be flared. I showed you how to make a pattern for it. The pattern includes the gather extension. The upper flounce will be the first detail to be pinned and cut. The flounce will be edged with a thin stripe of cambric. I'm going to show you how to do it. Even though we've already showed it to you, we're going to show you how to make a bias binding yourself. This is a very useful technique. I know that the white paper isn't seen on the white fabric clearly. I'm sorry, but there's nothing I can do about it. Notice that I'm not making too white flare. The outer edge is the one to be made wider. I hope that everything is clear so far. Pin the center detail of the flounce and then flare the details on each side of it. If the flounce was straight, like the lower one is going to be, the holes would have been placed straight as well. Due to the fact that the flare is round, the pattern in the fabric changes as well. I wanted to know what to pay attention to when working with such complicated fabrics. The dress is going to be very beautiful. I remind you that I'm making a flounce for the upper part of the dress. The fabric is folded in half. Please, be very attentive. The flounce at the bottom will be 180 cm wide. I didn't think about it when cutting the fabric, so the piece of fabric I'm working with is 180 cm wide. I remind you that the holes are placed vertically in the roll, but they are placed horizontally in the dress. Due to this fact, the flounce will be made of the two details. One will be 160 cm wide, and the second one 20 cm wide. It's perfectly fine, don't worry. This is the upper flounce. The pattern for the skirt should be pinned here. Its lower edge should be pinned about 1 cm below the last hole. 
The center front of the skirt should be pinned on the fold. Have a look at my needle holder. It's very beautiful. This is a gift from one of my subscribers. This really is a real shelf. I love it. My subscribers give me amazing gifts. Thank you so much. Have a look here. There should be a fold on the center front in the skirt and a seam on the center back of the skirt. Pin it just like the front detail. One centimeter below the last hole. I'm going to make the side seams about 1.5 cm wide. Next, I need to pin the front and the back details of the bodies. The center front should be pinned to the fold. What is very important is that the front and the back details should be pinned on the same level. This is very important. I can pin the back detail about 7 cm down from the biggest hole. This is one of the peculiarities of working with the fabric with the cutwork embroidery. The front detail can be pinned this way as well. Have a look here. Here is the biggest hole. The bottom edge of the front detail should be pinned 7 cm lower. It's also important that there are not the big holes in the point where the bodice and the skirt will be stitched together. I remind you that there is a tiny chest dart here, and there is also a waist tuck in the bodice. I want to get rid of the waist tuck. It can be done, because Kate is very slim. Have a look here. There is not enough space for a seam. I need to pin the detail higher. Not 7 cm, but 5 cm below the big holes. I need to do it in order to have enough space for the seam extension here. I'm pinning the front detail 5 cm below the big holes. As I've already said, I want to move the opening of the waist tuck to the chest dart. It will be hidden under the flounce, so there is no need for it to be beautiful. It's not convenient to work with the tucks and darts when making garments of the fabric with the cutwork embroidery. The opening of the chest dart is a bit bigger now. There is no waist tuck here anymore. I'm so happy that I've decided to do it. Next, I need to change the position of the back detail. It should also be pinned not 7 cm, but 5 cm below the big hole. Very nice. Be very attentive. Make sure that the front and the back details are pinned in such way that the patterns in the details match. There is still a waist stuck in the back detail. I'll try to get rid of it. I'll just move the opening to the side seam and the center back seam. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it. I honestly don't like making tucks and the garments made of the fabrics with the cutwork embroidery. The front and the back details of the bodies, the skirt details, the upper flounce. The only detail left to be pinned is the lower flounce. I'm drawing a line one centimeter below the big holes here. Be very attentive. Have a close look at what I'm doing. Notice that this is the lower one of the big holes. 
I need to draw a line one centimeter below it. Next, I need to draw one more line, 22 centimeters up from this one. It should be drawn and cut in between these two holes. I'll cut the flounce without drawing the second line. I'm basically cutting a stripe of fabric, which is 22 cm long. I remind you that this piece of fabric is not wide enough, so I'll have to cut one more detail for the flounce to be of the needed width. This piece of fabric is 160 cm wide. I think that it's not enough for the flounce. I prefer to work fast and easy. Do not overthink what you are doing. I saw a dress in Dolce & Gabbana boutique in Paris. It cost 450,000 rubles. The dress was made of the fabric with the cat pattern. They didn't think too long when sewing it. They did cut the patterns in half without any hesitation. There's something I can learn from them. I can start cutting the upper flounce now. The flounce at the bottom will be straight, and this one slightly round. It should be very beautiful. When I finish cutting the main fabric, I'll show you how to cut the lining. There will be no lining in the upper flounce. The lining in the flounce at the bottom will be gathered. The dress is going to be so beautiful. I can't wait to show you the result. The upper flounce is ready. Next time I'm going to show you how to cut the rest of the details. I'm also going to cut one more detail for the lower flounce. That's all for today. My name is Pausch Irina. Next time I will continue working with this dress. Subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Goodbye.